Okay, good morning, everyone. This is uh, Jerry from People Matters. Thank you for joining us today on a Friday morning for this session. Uh, so today we have a panel that's brought to you in partnership with uh, People Strong, and our topic for today is integration, new skills, and tech mapping: the role of HR and IT in the digital transformation maturity curve. So before you start on a digital HR journey, you need to have access to unconstrained and scalable technology. You also need new data sets, uh, process designs, and a strong alignment with the IT team. Whether you're thinking about embarking on a digital transformation journey or you're already in the process, you need to understand how to make the most of this HR technology roadmap. And you need to understand the expectations of the CIO and the CHRO. So that's where uh, we thought this webcast will be a very useful uh, conversation for you to get started on your journey. So the panelists today will uh, cover questions such as what are the prerequisites for a digital HR journey? What are the top, top challenges uh, that you face while designing an HR tech roadmap? How do you build a strong alignment with the IT function? And what are some of the top integration challenges that you need to be aware of? Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our uh, panelists today. We have with us Prakash Rao, who is the founding member and chief experience officer at People Strong. Uh, Prakash is an expert in the field of HR transformation. He has over 16 years of experience and he has led the transformation of human resources across various leading organizations. And he is an expert in the field of HR shared services. We also have with us uh, Sanjeev Prasad, uh, who is CIO of uh, Sutherland Global Services. As a Sutherland uh, CIO, Sanjeev brings with him more than 25 years of global experience in leading digital transformation of large, complex organizations um, as a CIO and for customers as a business leader of an HR technology services company. We also have with us Rupender Goel, who is the Transition Global CTIO, advisor and ex-CIO of uh, Tata Communications. Rupender is a global digital transformation leader with over 25 years of experience in IT and telecommunications uh, for transformation of B2B and B2C. Uh, Rupender is presently the Transition Global CTIO, helping startups and as an advisor uh, for several companies. Our partner for today's webcast is People Strong, established in 2005. Uh, People Strong is a leading HR solutions and technology company delivering cutting edge technology experience uh, for HR solutions in the space of recruitment, employee lifecycle management, payroll, compliance management, and analytics. Uh, the company has over 175 customers and over 500,000 users for over a decade now. So it's known for its pechan to innovate and uh, People Strong has many firsts to its name and the recent one being the first native HR app, which aims to transform the future of work and work life across companies. So we have saved time for you to ask questions at the end of this webcast. So for those of you who are joining us live, you can use the chat feature to uh, post questions at any time during this conversation and we will respond to as many questions as time allows. So we have uh, an exciting session ahead of us. And without any further delay, let me invite our panelists to take over. Over to you, Prakash. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jerry. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to host uh, all of you today uh, in this unique webinar uh, that we're doing. Uh, I'm, saying, I'm saying this is unique because uh, we, we've got uh, two panel members who are non-HR people to talk about to talk to all the HR folks out there, right? So, so we've got two great C, uh, CIOs, which is Sanjeev and Rupinder, to talk to us. And what we wanted to talk to you guys today was we wanted to focus on what are some of the challenges that um, you know HR faces when you're implementing digital technology. What are the elements of employee life cycle that you need to look at uh, to digitize? And all of this, we're going to hear this from a CIO perspective because. While HR leads the function and manages this function completely, the CIOs also have um, you know, a great stake in ensuring that, because they are the ones who also look at the complete employee experience as well. They are the ones who are aware of what's happening in the digital world as well. So uh, we've got a great session planned for you today, where we're talking about um, what, are the, what are the elements of uh, HR that could go digital, how do you design a digital HR system, what are the challenges that we face, what 
do HR folks need to do uh, to be able to transform themselves to adopt to the new digital world is some of the things that we're going to talk about. So without further, um, uh, you know, uh, much ado, I'm going to just start asking questions and I'm going to, uh, you know, get the panelists involved immediately. So uh, the first question uh, is to you, Sanjeev. Uh, you know, uh, first of all, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, what is, what are the, from an employee life cycle as a CIO, what are the elements that you think that a CIO would like to prioritize in terms of making them digital? So, you know, the way I would, uh, you know, uh, think about this question which you've asked uh, is not to jump straight into technology and what you can do with it, is really look at the challenges, uh, what, what organizations are facing and what, are the, what is the need of the hour for the new employee base which you are addressing, uh, which is the millennials. And obviously you have the, the people who have always been there with your organization as well, and you have to keep them in mind. If you start from there uh, and, and really look at what digital truly means in today's world. I mean, digital is a really big word, right? Everybody says digital means so many different things. Ultimately, the way digital is being looked at is total transformation, right? And we will talk about that separately. However, uh, and what that total transformation could look like is, I mean, you know the Uber story, right? Um, you had taxis earlier. Now you have shared taxis. You can use them anywhere multiple people available. If you if you take that analogy and put it in the people's world, you have expert um, networks, for example. You, you want variable resources. You have that ability, right? So there are so many ways of looking at it, uh, ultimately even replacing employees. Uh, but let's look at let's look at it a little bit more realistically as to what is possible today, right? And let's come from there. So if the first step, if you think about it, how do you find talent? right from the beginning, right? And you can see what's happening. I mean, what people are using today, instead of going to HR placement agencies, uh, they are look, using you know, LinkedIn and other ways of being able to find information. You could not even do this. The cost of recruitment is going down significantly. And there's no better person to talk about it actually is uh, than Prakash in this uh, being part of People Strong. Uh, however, having said that, that is a huge, huge, huge disruption to begin with. Now, when you think about it, find you're able to find employees through various social media uh, uh, components, which we are talking about. Now you look at the fact that how do you hire the person? How do you get the right talent in, right? How do you engage with that person? Um, and how do you speed, how do you increase the speed of hiring? The biggest challenge today is that if one person interviews one you know, uh, uh, individual, how many persons, how many individuals can he interview? Now imagine what you could do with a chatbot. So if you're able to look at people, uh, they, they are able to come on a chatbot, answer a few questions, they create a video of themselves. You could use AI and ML and all the stuff which they're actually answering to be able to say, hey, here are the shortlisted bunch of people we could actually look at, right? So that, you know, that itself cuts down your hiring costs significantly. It really, truly transforms it and actually helps you focus in the right kind of people. Your, your decision making, remember, in today's world, and I'm just taking an aside, uh, having the right person for the right job is the most important thing. You can't have a situation where you figure out one year later, one and a half years later, hey, this was the wrong person. Uh, the way things are changing today, survival is dependent on having the right people executing for you in a day in and day out basis. So if you're able to apply these technologies in recruitment and hiring, it really transforms that, right? Um, and then obviously, uh, imagine that. So once you're able to select, for example, think about it. Why would somebody want to join you? Look at the new people who want to come in. They say, do, what kind of environment do you have? The first step is the onboarding process. How do you simplify it for them? How are you able to not go through multiple you know, rounds of checks and background verifications and all kinds of things before? And then they go through that experience. They say, you know, what's happening with me? You know, is this the right place to work for? Because you, guess what? They have other places, great places to work in, and they have options to go to. So you got to make the onboarding process really, really smooth, right? From background checks to verification to all their document coming in, the way they are assigned as soon as they join, they are able to get their equipment, the places to work in, or, or even if it's from home, right? All that setup needs to happen very, very seamlessly. And as you go through, the biggest part of it is when they join, uh, today, it's a 
you know, people can find great jobs. Great people find great jobs. How do you retain them? I think the biggest thing, if you ask today, is the fact that in any place, the, the number one thing is, are the employees getting a chance to learn? Do you create an ecosystem for learning so that they know where they want to go, they know want to grow, and they are able to get those learning maps, they have the digital content to be able to actually to grow, uh, grow with the company, whether it's through online stuff, digital, or it's through you know real experiential learning, or it's through classroom, a blend of all of that together. How do you truly provide that? And, and actually that's become so important. And then obviously the growth is the part of it. And even when they exit, remember, exit doesn't mean anything today. I would, you would love to have people that they have such a fantastic experience and they're probably going for reasons generally for whatever, they want something better. They think that they can do something different, but you want these people to be able to come back. So how do you make their exit process even better, right? So your whole exit process of how do you, whether it's financial, whether it's anything else, right? All of these pieces should be actually automated in such a way. Now you can call them, you know, I'm being a little careful here. You can, a lot of you folks will say, oh, is this truly digital? Is this truly dig disruptive? And we will come to that as well. But remember, all these components really need to be in place to really truly provide a transformational experience for your employees, that they want to be there, they love to be there, your employee portal, your ability to engage with HR, everything should be mobile enabled. I mean, all those things are given now, right? So all of those pieces need to be put in place so that the experience is truly, truly phenomenal. Um, and so I, I hope that addresses, Prakash, what you were trying to ask. Absolutely. Absolutely, Sanjeev. Thank you so much for that start. So it's great to hear you say that, you know what, uh, having, um, uh, having a complete digital HR strategy is key to also enabling a great place to work for is one key uh, element that I took from what you said. Thank you so much for that. So uh, now, uh, Rupin, I want to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, if you look at the complete HR, what uh, all the work that HR does, what do you think? What are the elements that that they should be pushing towards uh, uh, digital from your perspective? So first of all, like you know, in my mind, we have HR fraternity, and we want to push our digital agenda across. Digital is, as Prakash said, is not a new word. As a zero and one, we all use emails and whatnot, but digital always exists. But what does this digital mean? It means complete transparency. It means empowerment, true empowerment. And if you are changing your HR journey, if you need to automate or do digital in HR, so first of all is the HR Fox mindset, the culture has to change. They have to be personally enabled digitally. They should appreciate and they should know what they're doing. So I've seen organizations where they take the tools and they push it and none of the HR people themselves are aware or they're up to the speed on those tools. So number one, as an example, if you look at internet in the organizations, we talk about free internet, free talk across. And all of us, we use internet irrespective of where we are. Even if it's restricted at work, we may go step out a little bit outside and open our 4G in the mobile or whatnot and we will use it. So why can't organizations trust their own employees and give access to the, if the digital world is tied to the internet and enable it? Sure, their security and other boundaries can be built behind to enable not to do something wrong within bounds, but why it's not there? Same with the use of the mobile or the applications or solutions. Number one is empowerment, giving free access to the employees and your own employees in HR and your employees and trust. Once you build the trust, digital really becomes a, true story for adoption with the transparency. As Prakash mentioned, some of the tools like analytics and AIs or ML and machine learning and others, HR has to know and learn first among themselves as a culture and transform their own journey. They have to think about it, how we can go paperless. Most of the HR processes in any organization or finance, unfortunately back offices, we call IT as well there. I mean, we use a lot of excuses and all on the law and order or regulatories or power or whatnot, and we're still paper-based. I think going paperless is one of the key elements. The next one is a very critical one. We should put our stake on board and we said we will do zero touch. Employee life cycle to taking anybody on board, even at the inception stage to final exit. 
it should be completely digitally managed as we do on good and bad tools like whatsapp facebook or what not why can't we use those tools day in day out why can hr kind of people can deploy similar kind of tool at workplace so helpful so useful that we don't need the learning and hr fraternity and our employees use same empowerment that's a one way to go digital journey in hr as a fraternity Thank you so much, uh, uh, you know, for that. I think uh, two elements I picked up. One, you know, I like the way you said, trust your employees, open internet out, and have have guardrails, but ensure that you're able to trust your employees. And second, I also like the way you said that, you know, simple things like we go paperless, but compliance becomes such a big key for HR that we uh, tend to forget about employee experience. So thanks for those words. So uh, now moving to you, Sanjeev. Now we spoke of, you know, you spoke of AI, you spoke of ML, you spoke of uh, chatbots. There are mobile apps. So, uh, you know, what, what, are, what are these digital tools out there and how do you think HR can, you know, uh, what are things out there in the market which HR can start using to walk towards this path of uh, being a digital organization? So, look, um, you know, it's very interesting. Um, when you talk about digital, I think a first thing, as Rupinder also mentioned, um, I, I like the phrase which Gartner uses. Uh, every job is a technology job. And what that really means is that everybody doesn't have to be a coder, right? Everybody needs to understand in every role and function which you play, what technology can do for you. So obviously you need to be curious. You need to be somebody who's got learning ability, uh, who's able to uh, identify what are the areas of opportunity uh, and to be able to bring in the right set of technologies to make it happen. I think you spoke about at the beginning of the session that, hey, look, the person should be able to work with uh, IT CIO organization, right? Until unless a person knows what to drive from them or to drive from a vendor or partner, that doesn't work. So I think I just wanted to give that message. When you start looking at digital components, really, uh, it is really starting off with the fact that we're understanding that most HR folks need to understand technology now, right? They need to know what technology can do. Not to be a coder, not to be a developer, but they must understand it. Number two, the, I would start from another experience. I would say what has happened in the last, with digital transformation, the last five to seven years or 10 years, is that, that the customer has become at the center of all transformation which is going on. And when I look at from an HR perspective, who's your biggest customer? It's your employee, right? An employee, when he's going through the hiring process, when he's going through the selection process, onboarding, all of that, right? He's your customer. So everything you need to start with keeping the, the what you call customer journey, I would call employee journey in mind, right? Starting with that. And then look at all the digital components. I actually addressed a lot of the digital components, you know, whether it's the chatbots of the world, whether it's the, uh, what do you call, whether it's the AI ML based selection process, which you want to use, Right? Whether you use AI ML to actually see, uh, and for example, I could look at email, I could use the content they write to decide if, if the person is the right person for the next job. Right, All of those pieces you could actually use, or you want to use portals. All of these pieces are actually, I've already spoken about. What I would like to say here is that I would like you know, the, the folks to think of the, the, the employee right from the, before he's hired to the time he's retired as and look at the experience they need to have. And then build your transformation journey around that. You'll have to do, do process maps around that. You will have to look at what data elements you need to look at. You'll have to look at what experiences you want to give them. And then being able to implement the digital technology, right? To be able to making it work. So it is truly about, I would say, employee journey mapping. I would look at it, make that the center of centerpiece of your transformation. And then go ahead and, and, and actually implement the various tools which we spoke about. All these are digital elements. Sure. So, Sanjeev, uh, you know, because you said something interesting, I just have a follow up question to you before I go back to Rupinder. Now, when you say that, you know, ha have employer at the center, but sometimes, uh, you know, we spoke of compliance, right? Uh, the, the, the various compliances that the HR team has to focus on as well, the various compliances that the IT team has to focus on as well. So, how do you walk this, you know, in line between compliance and experience, uh, where do, which way do you should we should organizations tend to move towards? You know, what's your views on that? 
So look, uh, there is uh, so there is no right or wrong answer to this, right? It varies a lot among the industries you work in, the sensitivity of the data you manage. If I'm in a BPO company, um, you know, I manage customer data. Who touches customer data? It's the real person, the agent on the floor who touches it, right? If I'm a bank, you know, I manage, I mean, even more important customer data, right? Their money. I mean, money is now in the form of data, right? That's how it exists. So how do you really control that, right? Now, so let me, let me, I, so I think it's very important to understand the industry you work in. Manufacturing, different sec. What is important in manufacturing? It is not employee, I mean, employee data is responsible everywhere, right? With new GDPR roles, everywhere is critical. But there it is PLM, right? Which is your, your IP, right? Which is important. So you got to look at it from that angle and decide. Now, what I'm going to come to now is that basis this, you got to come out and figure out where do you need to put what kind of controls? We in the BPO world talk about concentric controls. So we give, for example, agents on the floor who work really, really closely with the customers, right? And with customer data, they have access to nothing, right? Practically. What you do is you give them a thin client. Now I'm getting a little technical here, folks. So just bear with me, right? We don't want them to do cut paste, everything else, right? That's what we do. We don't give them access to internet. Uh, people who work on the floor. And, and let's say they're doing finance and accounting process. Now, if somebody's doing research process, of course, I will give them because that's the tool, right? They need to have independence. So you put controls on, on a concentric basis. Then you look at it. Okay, the guys who do digital work, I mean, they should be given open stuff because they got to find, figure out what the world is doing. The people who do research, they need to have an open world. Sales and marketing, they need to have an open world. But you would put in restrictions where? On proposal on commercial data, right? Because that's strict for you. Some of it you may actually prevent, some of you may monitor and then take action later, right? Where it impacts your customer, I would rather prevent. Where, for example, I want to give people flexibility. So I'm in sales and marketing, right? I need to have data, which I need to send to the customer. I need to look at it. So I can't put so much control on them that they can't do their job. But guess what? I monitor them. So if we find that they are you know, taking solution documents, et cetera, et cetera. They're copying them. They can do it. But guess what? If we find something untoward, then we are able to actually verify it and go back and say, guys, why are you copying so much data? Right? And then you take action accordingly. So uh, there's no one, one size fit all. I think to the point which is being made, you got to be flexible. At the same time, you need to understand the risk to your organization and the risks are huge today. You could actually lose customers so fast you don't can't even realize that so i think it's very important to have an extremely smart infosec strategy around who gets to do what what controls you put at what level you can't do one size fits all in any organization today that's my summarization on this thank you sanjeev so rupinder now moving to you now now i'm going to ask one big big question right so how do you get hr and it teams to work together to make a smooth employee experience because uh, you know uh, we always within an organization you always have these teams who sometimes never uh, you know uh, tend to see uh, eye to eye so what is your take what 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 do we need to do to get hr and it together uh, to look at employee as one so prakash you really hit the nail on the head if i look at hr and it they are both our internal service provider inside the organization and look at their SLAs and outputs and all very similar. One is dealing more with people, HR deal with people as well. And all the employees are the customers of IT people as well. They provide all the support and all the things, and SLAs or output or help desk or whatnot. But unfortunately, both march in different directions. And if we work together, there could be huge, huge, huge synergies. I've seen like in some companies, some places, HR people going and making decisions and buying their own tools to stand alone because they want to keep it very secret. They don't want to share with anybody. Everybody wants to hide behind compliance and the data protection or whatnot and all. At the same time, they're sending information and all very clear text on the emails and offer letter attached with a simple password, your date of birth or something, and a second email following up on the same account with your password to be done. So it's really conflicting. One of the ways to address this challenge is a problem statement is co-create. I believe IT and HR should co-create. There should not be any more processes which are done in silos. There should not be an HR process or a digital or automation process. It should be together co-created. The digital world 
with the agile processes coming up there is no need to write something separately or do something separate and then come together and redesign or redo or code it later so we need to think about it co creation day one bring it and hr folks together with one goal one objective where the output should be the key and not how it should be done and let some of the processes which hr need to design or do it people should be part of it so they can appreciate they can automate or they can add value to minimize or look at the solutions where we can do a better solution at the same time the other folks need to appreciate and learn and this will automatically come in if they both sit in the same room hand to hand in the agile processes using devops together i personally believe if we do it right there should not be a separate help desk for it or hr if all comes in automatically the data or some system or processes can be accessed because if you are doing rightly so your sla should be how many calls are not coming instead of coming how many things are resolved by employee themselves so their sla or their kra should be zero calls not like you know how many how much time you take to resolve a call what answers you are providing happy customer and happy customer it should be other way around is a digital means elimination if you can eliminate sorry uh, eliminate the physical touch the physical work the handing over the paper from desk to desk from email to email signing to signing or making several step processes to single step that's where the beauty comes so that's my take like you know we have all those tools and resources where which can be easily deployed some of the tools even in manufacturing that can be deployed easily for the people processes or could be sales and marketing why can't a sales and marketing tool can be deployed internally or externally for hr folks as a automation digital tool to attract the right talent and do the right marketing why only marketing sometimes we all forget our employees are the biggest brand when they leave the company they go around or when they even at work when they go and talk to their friends their relatives their other people or other coworkers in other organizations they carry the biggest burden so the marketing or sales is not single authority of a organization when the digital world is there i think it's across the organization so when you sit in that board room on that table i think the co creation having joint slas or kras is the key and wearing the two hats with the co creation world that's the only way the two need to work together there should not be a separate it process or hr process there should be only hr or really digital processes and employee excellence employee onboarding or what not and not like separately once you define be automated or we look at it later that's my take sure so sure, I, have, I, have because because i just i just saw in, uh, uh, i thought it would be interesting to ask you this question uh, one of the participants narendra is asking that when a digital implementation journey goes wrong you know let's say hr and it are trying to do something together and the co creation did not happen and something goes wrong then the relationship on the trust breaks down and typically what happens during that time is there is a tendency for both the teams to you know start pointing fingers that then try to go back and fix what happened so in such a scenario if an organization where a digital journey they've tried to do something in the past and it has failed now how do you bring back everybody on the board and build the relationship and trust together together for them to work again together so this is not something new it happens across the board even in manufacturing when we design or do a car it goes to beta versions and fail not all the products of all the companies all the startups they succeed we have to change the mentality and the three things there number one instead of having the whole project done and known it's wrong i think that's very bad we should do agile every step bite by bite when we are doing it going live with it small small pieces so we know the strings are getting made and you will get a garland each thing should be seen as a bead and all the beads together to be a garland so if the mistakes can be corrected at the right time i think the stake or the finger pointing exercise will be less number 2 even if it happens let's assume whatever the question has been put up there i agree but that's where the leadership comes in picture and the culture the chro or the cio should come together embrace the team and they should throw a celebration party let's learn from our mistakes is a live course you don't need to go to an harvard school or ivy league you can right, run right here right on the job so let's take this learning or as an investment in the organization and let's not repeat it and let's do it better we can finger point all along and what not but we will not achieve anything so there has to be a culture of celebration of if you always succeed in an organization 
I personally believe it will be real geometrical progression of that organization. Every organization will reach 100 billion within a few years, and which is very tough. Chip. So as we are grown up as a natural human tendency, we start walking. When we are ch children, we fall many times. We learn biking. We fall many times. You can blame your father or your elder sister or brother who is helping you to do it, not to hold it right. But at the end of the day, you know it's together. You need to balance. You need to do it at the same time. They provide you support as well. And sometimes when you're biking very good and very fast, you think somebody is holding behind you, and actually that person is already had their hands off because he or she knows you're there. So that's where the leadership comes in as a culture, building the trust and bringing the teams together, not to bite on smaller items, but look at the bigger picture. Great. I really like the way you simply, you know, you're, you're giving these very simple examples uh, as well, Rupinder. So uh, now over to you, Sanjeev. The two, the, the, you know, I want to take a very different thread now. I'm going to put, I'm going to, you know, uh, bring focus on the elephant in the room. Uh, because Rupinder spoke of do it yourself, uh, moving to a model where elimination, where employees don't even have to come to HR. You said every job is a technology job. Now, wait a minute. Are we saying that there's not going to be any job for HR tomorrow? What are you going to what are going to happen to all the jobs? Now, this is a big question that all the HR folks have, um, you know, so so what are going to happen to the jobs? How should how should people be preparing for that? So, look, um, you know, the way I would I would uh, <laughs> let's let's look at what digital transformation again. And I think we need to keep going back to it, what people actually mean by that. And I think Rupinder really put it really well. It's either totally elimination of something. Why do you need, he's talking about shared services, right? Why do I need a shared service? If all the systems work exactly, we know we can anticipate what client needs. In, in this case, employee being the client. A, at different stages of the journey, employee journey, whether it's, you map it, all employee journey, at the time of payroll, at the time of leave, at the time of leaving, join, every, every aspect of it, right? If you could actually create something where you don't need, right? And you are able to anticipate and provide them the information and the help required to actually achieve that. You, that's that's the holy grail of digital transformation. Obviously, it's an impact on jobs, and we should talk about that. Uh, now, I personally also look at the fact that I think it's one of the roles of HR today to truly see how they are enabling the company to be digitally transformed by saying, "Why do we need the job?" For example, it's not, uh, and they have to be partners in in business with this. Because, for example, a, let's say a, let's say a BPO environment. Let's take an IT job. Rupinder and me come from the IT world as well. Let's look at a BPO as well. Look at all the help desk jobs which are there today, right? People have been doing. They're going to gradually go away. It's our job to proactively lead that change and transformation, right? So that you know through chatbots through simplifying our infrastructure, we don't need the people. That's our job to actually, by the way, that's a big disruption. Tomorrow, if I look at, again, I've got people who do accounts payable work, right? If I can do integration between the client, uh, you know, uh, uh, ERP and the supplier's ERP and 90% of the data flows between the system, I don't need an AP person. I need to understand that as I'm not saying I need to be an expert on it, but IT, between IT, HR, finance, you need to understand that and enable that. That truly is heading towards digital transformation, right? You're eliminating things which you don't need. You're finding different ways of doing it. Uh, when you go, if you think about this, what is blockchain? Let me bring in a little bit of new technology in blockchain. In simplest term, right, what it does is that, you know, half the stuff which we do in our lives is reconciliation. Somebody gives me one data, it moves to another person, you reconcile it. Somebody moves under, it's un, tr not trusted data, right? It's really truly ask me, they're not non, they're all non-value added work. They are jobs, I know that, right? But they're non-value added work. So somehow you, you've got to remove these efficiencies. Yes, the kind of jobs will become different, right? You need to make sure then that people, you've got people in the company who can learn. You got to make sure that people understand that that's the only way that they will be able to move ahead in times to come, because that is what's going to happen in this world now. Everything is going to get automated. Coding is going to happen by by AI, ML machines, right? All the processes which we spoke about is going to happen through that. Hiring recruitment, I can guarantee you, 
And when you do an interview today, yes, you can touch feel and you'll get some idea. I'm not saying it's going to go away. But if you have all the information on a person through multiple exchanges, which he may have in the through his social platform, through his uh, uh, through his LinkedIn platform, through his communication on mails, through his uh, let's say you ask him questions through his voice, through the interaction, you will actually come to a point where you'll get a fairly good idea of what the person is going to be. These are all major, major disruptions. So uh, the question is, jobs are going to get eliminated. Let's put it this way. I think what we need to do is make sure that people understand they have to learn and continue to transform. There is no other way to live uh, in this world which we live in. Every You've got to be a learning individual. The organizations have to be learning organization. We have to accept volatility as a way of life. We have to accept disruption as a way of life. Gone are the days where you say, oh, I'll be doing this job for 10 years and I'm going to be doing this forever and ever. So um, I think that's my take on this whole idea of what's, what's going to happen to the jobs. That is going to happen. People will have to learn. Sure, sure. And, and now, Rupinder, you know, uh, the next part of the question to you is that now if uh, in, this, in this world, increasingly digital world, uh, what should HR do? What are the new skills HR needs to learn? How does HR now reinvent themselves to keep themselves um, relevant? So. Uh, what are your views on that? So, because, yeah, go ahead, Prakash. Uh, I'm saying you know, the uh, uh, the conversation we had day before. You know, you had such amazing thoughts on on uh, the fact that HR is stuck. Um, you know, somewhere probably 15 years, 15, 20 years down the line, uh, and you had a great view. So, we'd love to hear what are your thoughts on how should HR now progress uh, in this digital world? So, I've seen on the screen one of the questions from Chandra about Darwinism and uh, goes back to skills as Prakash had touched very well and explained. So let's learn, we have all learned the word of evolution, and, but we all forget the people who adopted are here and we're talking on the screen today on this webinar and some of the animals or things which you did not adopt like dinosaurs, they are not there. So same, same thing in any culture, anywhere, any revolution, this is digital or not digital. That's where the game changes. If you, are, if you think you don't have the right skills, you have not acquired in time, in, inside the HR fraternity or to your employees across the organization, I think those companies, brick and mortar or other stuff will become down the road as dinosaurs or unless and until they change. Somebody else, invisible hand and invisible forces will come in who is more efficient, better, can do a better job and will eat your lunch. And you might not even know. And the challenge there in the older days, we had people need a lot of startup cost, a lot of entry of barriers. You need to have huge capitals to build the plants, to have the customer service centers, call center, whatnot, to have your product and services designed and so. But today, today those barriers are gone. With little few dollars with a credit card, you can open an account where your whole infrastructure or servers or all can be available to you. Within few clicks, you can start selling your product. You can design your product. You can use uh, sharing processes across globe or different employees and solutions or not your their own, not even on your payroll on demand basis. So that's where the huge, huge game changes. So one of the examples, like you know, HR people need to move on and to learn to get away from the cocoon of compliance and not done here. One of the examples, BYOD, bring your own device. IT and HR co-create together. And it's a huge no-no in several organizations. And IT or HR, they take the device, they configure, they control, they do the asset control and all the access to it and all. And I personally believe when an employee is coming, why can't you give him, offer him same amount of money in the offer letter and let him bring his own device? At least he will be familiar. He will be using Apple or HP or any other brand, any other solution. If he's left hand, he can buy the left hand key hand, keyboard. And when he take that, uh, device home or something as we all take our device of the office as well he will be more useful more happy and have very better employees majority of the organizations you walk through they have biggest complaint and this is one of the learnings for HR let's get out of the cocoon number one to l listen and learn and change yourself with the digital and bring some of the smaller biting items and see the impact as BYOD is one second one a lot of analytics tools a lot of algorithms are available in the market today or they can be done 
you need to do them for your internal purpose as well as to the employees throw those tools throw those apples and take the ideas and co create and do the networking internally let them take those tools and learn from them and see on on their behavior on their own timing on email analysis when i hear these words i think the biggest issue in my mind my apologies guy when i hear in the organization large enterprises hiring and firing i personally believe when a organization goes through without any natural climate like you know 9111 or something major change in the business on hiring and firing these kind of chros or ceos should be fired first if they don't know the forecast their business model if they have not trained their people to their business i think they need to be addressed not the people who are livelihood they are the puppets they are hired by you they are taken away from another organization and hired and given a pink slip so taking putting every day in the organization new tools and new processes new learning is the hr job so when people say hr jobs will be eliminated i personally believe their jobs will not be eliminated if they will be eliminated if they don't evolve but they should be looking after people what's tomorrow they should not be looking anyone yesterday or today if the digital is there they need to look at it as every employee of this organization knows how to do the bots or how, how to use them effectively if they want to know the payroll information can they help themselves can they do the algorithms where they need to have the basic information instead of waiting somebody else to write a, uh, give the english requirement and somebody else to write the code those days are gone so i personally believe it's one of the things the skills is skills is skills hr need to sharpen their skills and it's not my job is it job or is a sales and marketing job i think everybody need to cross that boundary bring that out they need to live in the world of the customer to gather their internal customers in fact the external customers as well and manage that life cycle proactively using those tools and get away from the it's not my job it will look after the programmer programming or backup or security if they breach there when the security breach happens i personally believe it's not some security officer or it whose responsibility is the responsibility of every person who or she is doing it it's critical for sure we need to build i mean if we drive on the roads the cars then we should drive the tanks so that uh, when somebody hits us or we do something a road road uh, hole comes in or something we can go very well but that's not practical at the same time how the system and solutions and processes are built they are not 100% but otherwise the productivity or outcome or the user friendliness will go away so i think there's a common sense access that's where the hr folks and all they need to change their fraternity their mindset and work hand in hand with other employees and other people as their customers and build that trust today some of the organizations my apologies guys hr folks are seen as cops they are seen as like you know in any way employee thinks i talk to some lot of employees at the lower level any level like they will try to hurt you they say there's only hr means one word is going to know whatever you propose whatever you say will be no so that mindset you may not mean no you may not mean but why can't we have that transparency digitally built in processes and solution where employees or people before coming to you they can answer and they can have access and your own people can learn and access have the question and answer answered same way as prakash said the payroll processes your taxation and all today digitally a bot can answer all those questions and when i talked to one of the persons in hr he said oh there is a huge security concern how do we know who is talking on the other side i need to ask that person name security social number so does bot machine can now not lie people still can keep on chotek differently and when that person is accessing the payroll data when he walks out in the evening is writing on a small pad or something in their mind where is going versus if the bot goes and directly accesses in the payroll database and gives that to the information to real time to the employee i think is last minute up to date current and the translation is right instead of having in between steps where people interfere so i think they have to let go they have to let co create and also biggest thing is there are tools and things available in the market i personally see personally seen as a co-working with my colleagues in hr in it sometimes we have implemented a great system 15 years ago and we are all in love and all use it and we don't want to change it i think we need to transform that mindset we need to be nimble we need to look at what's going on and we need to change our way of working and tools and processes with the people so three come in together and bring that organization together so if we have implemented my apologies a long back erp 50 years ago from manufacturing bus drivers to hr and i keep on using the same way so i think those things has to change okay great i think uh, 
Um, you know, I like some of the hard-hitting answers that you're giving, Rupinder. So now I'm going to, you know, ask uh, two or three questions which are very simple, uh, you know, which is yes or no, or you have to choose one or the other, uh, so that we could have some fun while you're here as well. It's those kind of questions, right? So um, I'll, you know, first Sanjeev and then Rupinder, if you can answer one by one. Now, the first question is, you know, most of the CIOs uh, that we meet uh, these days in the market when we're implementing HR technology through People Strong, uh, the the question they have is now they would have now, do you go and look at multiple apps which are really deep in their own area, like one app for leave, uh, leave attendance in your HRIS, one app for performance, one app for collaboration? Would you prefer that? Or would you want to look at putting everything into one single app and that one app working? Uh, quick answer first from Sanjeev and then Rupinder. Uh, see, there is, uh, in current times, the way things are changing, I would go with the best components which are available. I cannot wait for one guy to provide everything. I have been doing this. I have, by the way, I had a cloud first strategy in 2010. I moved everything to the cloud for a very large company, which you all know of, right? And I had to make choices. Everything was not available. In today's world, you got to move with speed, you got to put both it together. And guess what? That's why you go with cloud. You have the ability to even change it as you go along. We changed our collaboration platform. We went with Jive because that's what we had to implement. Threw it out. As soon as something else came out, we implemented that because that had to be done. So point I'm trying to make is the need of the hour is speed. I would love to have everything integrated together, but you know, you got to make choices and just move on. Sure. sure. Rupinda, over to you. What would you say to that? I fully agree. I will go for best for the functionality based in. Not one broad brush which can paint the whole thing. Those dinosaurs old days are gone. Okay, great. So my next question uh, is, you know, I think uh, now people, people, uh, you know, if, uh, the urge for, I also see a question that's coming from ERP. Somebody is asking 36% of the ERP implementation failure is due to functional requirements. Now, people used to ERPs, the urge for ERPs, you know, um, on prem solutions, so you're able to do what you want. But when you get into an on cloud solution like People Strong, for example, or any one that's there in the market, now all of these come with their own best practices. But you can only configure, you can't customize. So you will have to live with what that's there in the system. So what's your take? So should you move towards customer customization or do you think best practice configuration, rest process change should work? What do you think? First, Sanjeev. Um, I absolutely is for best practice based. So for example, if I'm a BPO company, I know what the best practices for us is from an HR perspective, hiring recruitment process, because we hire 10,000 people in a year and a large one like the one that I've worked for in the past, right? I would go with the best practice configurable situation. What I would do is that for somebody asked, all the digital transformation piece, see all the analytics piece, engaging with the customers, right? Those are all the pieces which you would keep adopting, which you will come from, right? But core stuff, I would actually go with the best practices, make sure it's configurable and implementable. There's, if somebody says, my life, my, my company is different, uh, 90% is bull. Okay. There may be 10% truth in it. Sure. Sure. Arupinda, what do you what, what I should... really agree with Prakash? We should go with the best practices because, guys, it's about time. We need to look at competencies over business. If I'm a steel manufacturer, my competency should be steel, not the HR processes. When I bring employees on board or something else or whatnot, I think those are the best practices should be across. That's not my truly the competency or my state of art of cutting processes, which will make a difference. For sure, configuring and using differently or efficiently different cultures, different way of adopting it will make a difference, but not to go and code yourself or do it yourself. Great. So uh, thank you so much, uh, both of you. Now I'm going to uh, go and look at some of the questions that people are asking. And I will, uh, uh, if you guys could look at that. Um, Sanjeev, first question to you. Uh, you know, Narendra is asking, how will HR manage employee productivity and cost components simultaneously in the digital era? So he's saying employee productivity and cost. See, look, uh, again, it varies from industry to industry, right? Uh, you want to, I think Rupendra spoke about trust in a big way. If I do work which is mundane, by the way, which can be automated, right? Anyway, uh, sooner or later, uh, a bot or an automated tool is going to do it, right? If it's responding to a call, a chatbot can do it sooner or later. If it is paying a bill, uh, some automated process can do it. 
Uh, I think the key part here is that um, you should be looking at folks who are doing value added work for you. And for that, you need to create a trusted environment uh, where you, again, you hire Bait. When you look at hiring again, I, I, I'm, I'm, again, I'm not a, I know I'm not an HR person, but for me, hiring is and making sure the right person for the right job is the most important thing. When you're looking at hiring or putting a person in the job, you've got to make sure that they have the right value system, the right skill set and the competencies, the learning ability uh, for those kind of jobs, the higher end job you're talking about, so they can actually produce in that. So I think that aspect of productivity is truly about hiring the right people and trusting them to be able to perform. I'm not talking about mundane jobs, right? I think those are days, those are going to get automated and you can, you can do all kinds of ways of tracking them. I mean, the BPO companies do that, whole bunch of companies do that. But that to me is, is passe. I think we need to look at the future and that's what's important. From a cost perspective, guess what? That's exactly where it goes. If I am able to focus on eliminating a lot of the jobs which, which are repeatable, right? which uh, a, a process can actually uh, do, then you can reduce cost significantly. You can actually bring in people then who can truly add value. If somebody is really able to analyze people better, right, and hire a person, let's say you have a psychology background, right? Today, psychology is a thing in everything which you do. In digital, psychology plays a huge role. Even in hiring, for example, if you are able to get somebody who's able to assess people better from an HR perspective, if I look from an IT perspective, if I have a person who's working and who, for example, I think we didn't touch upon this uh, in some form, Rupinder touched upon it, but I want to say that. I want to have hire people in IT who truly understand the, the business side of the world, who are empathetic, who have a way of thinking. Instead of thinking of technology all the time, they should be thinking of, hey, how does an HR guy work? How do I work with him better? So what that will do is that will automatically impact your cost structures. It will impact the kind of people you have, they improve the productivity because the kind of work you should do is much more high, highly value added. That's my response to that. Sure, sure. Thanks for that. Rupin, the next question to you. So Chandra, you know, uh, one who spoke of Darwinism is making an important point here. Technologies are changing so fast, right? So in such a scenario, how do you drive adoption of technology? Because whatever you're implementing might become old in the next two to three years. So uh, how do you drive technology adoption in such a scenario? Yeah. So there are a couple of things. Number one, as, uh, as I said before, but you have to go agile. When the technologies are changing, we need to change at the same time and adopt it. So agile means like if you do something, let's not wait for six months to implement and start using and adopting. It should be in the small chunks, bite by bite. So as, a, as you implement, as you do something, small, small processes, start using it, get the value and outcome out of it. So you will always be current. So that's one of the key elements today. And DevOps, technical word, but agile way, where you need to take, take the big piece as a Kaizen processes, old processes, cut into pieces. Each piece should go through life cycle and learn together and adopt together. Then the next one and next one and the whole thing should be built in. That's very, very critical if you don't want to be obsolete. In the older days, we implemented some of the large solutions or two year, three year journey. Then we start using adopting for two, three years then it lives for 10 or 15 years. Those days are gone. Technology is changing very fast and it should come in there. One more thing I have seen successfully, we all have a different learning curve. We have different processes or age or timing or went to schools differently. So it's nothing right wrong. There's always be that gap of generation or some, something. But I think I personally believe we should inject in every team different kind of talents, right? From young talent to the millennials and other with other people mix and match. So that's where hand-holding, working together, and taking their ideas and reverse mentoring will be key to adopt and learn with the faster speed. It's not that non-invented syndrome or something stupid they're saying or whatnot. We should have a very valuable inputs from them and how to impact them and how to roll it out, how to adopt it, how to absorb it. At the same time, our experience and all, they should take it as an advantage. And there's a mix of two can bring the things together. So learning and skills, bite by bite is a key. And let's state yourself, I mean, the front of the technology or the current things and utilize it. And one more thing, like, you know, I found a lot of people, they say, okay, let's go digital. Let's implement this new tool, new process that are adopted. At the same time, certain folks in certain communities could be sales and marketing, especially in HR. They will still keep their old app and processes or data same way. They'll still keep on running the same Excel in their database or their laptop. 
I think that behavior is critical and they need to change. That's the biggest, biggest no, no. I mean, we all need to adopt and march in the same direction if we want the company to win. Prakash touched very well on productivity. Let me touch back same way Alliance here. I think uh, to me, it's not the right word. If you want to build the trust with employees, you want somebody to come at eight o'clock and leave at five and 24 by seven, keep on punching. If you look at the productivity of a guy who is evaluating resumes in HR or collecting resumes, so end of the day, you will say you have done 100 resumes. So your productivity is very high divided by eight hours or the guy who has done 200 maybe is highly productive versus a guy who has used the digital tools, analyticals and all the tools available to him and found the right match, right thing, the best two employees and he's done in half an hour. Machines doing the job for him and versus 200 CVs going through with the technical matching or something and uh, maybe not the right employees got picked up. So who is more productive? I personally believe the productivity should change. That word should not be seen as a physical work or hard work or number crunching work. And also one has to look at how we can create a bandwidth. If we want our innovations to be digitally enabled, adopted, innovative, I think it's our job to create the bandwidth of the employees from eight hours, one or two hours, they should have a thought process, thinking, learning, doing something, adopting it instead of giving them like, you know, sorry about it, work of a donkey, you show up and there are hundred cement bags, you go back and forth from one location to another location. I think that creativity or innovation goes away. So, and we expect our, our organization to be innovative. We should be forefront looking, we should be digital, we'll be enabled, these people will adopt it. How the person will adopt, how we will learn new technology, how we'll talk to other people, how we'll share his ideas. So I personally believe the old way of productivity measurement or cost measurement should go away. I mean, why we are important about the cost? If some organizations are right in today's world, they should be looking at the revenue. Your true parameter should be the growth and the revenue, not the cost. Cost should be a percentage of it, which should automatically flow. The mindset of everybody should be, how do I create more revenue? How do I create more market share? Not to look at the cost. That's how the today's like some of the digital companies like Google's or Facebook or Amazon's, they have grown that way. If they would have looked the cost, the negative PNL they had, they would have not been there where they're standing today. Sure, sure. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, Sanjeev, I think there's one important question which somebody is asking, which is if you're evaluating a new HR technology, what are some of the important parameters that you should keep for that? Um, so what are your views on that? Wow, uh, that's such a broad question, right? Uh, and obviously, the way one thing I would say the way to address is that don't buy it in isolation. I think uh, you heard Rupinder talk about people buying it on their own. You know, what is the, the, the word is uh, shadow IT, right? I think what you need to make sure is that you work with the, the IT organization of make, when you're selecting a product. Uh, there are features, capabilities which you want. You want to make sure it gets integrated with your current environment, right? And, and even security, you don't want to let that go. You want to make sure that the security folks are involved. So when you're making a choice, you need to look at it from all the factors. Uh, you also need to make sure that you're not duplicating stuff uh, because you may already have some product and people may not even know about it. So there are a num number of measures that actually go into evaluating what to buy. I mean, function features, et cetera, you're looking at it, you get excited by it. Maybe it's a great user experience. But you need to get in multiple folks to decide. See, the, the big thing today is that it is not about you know, individual work today anymore. A lot of the thing has to be collaborative. We keep talking about uh, you know, working together. I think it's the leadership's job to create a culture, to create KPIs, which drives collaboration. I don't know uh, if you, I'm sure a lot of you follow my, uh, Nadella, right, um, at Microsoft. His, his Every meeting starts with a discussion on culture, ends with a discussion on culture. It is all, they used to be highly individual, you know, KPI focus driven as an organization. It's all becoming more collaborative. It's all about joint because no person can actually achieve the same things together. Now, why I'm talking even of a selecting of a product, because you got to understand what does it really take to make a product successful? The IT guy would actually end up just if he has to decide by themselves, he may not understand everything what is really truly required from an HR perspective. Ideally, in fact, the IT guys also need to grow and change so they're not just IT folks, but they're really HR folks who really truly understand HR. By the way, I didn't start off as a, uh, 
you know, uh, as a computer science guy. I w- I'm a manufacturing guy to begin with. I worked in healthcare. And then I've been doing IT stuff, right? So you actually put, you understand processes, you understand how people work, and then you're able to associate. You understand what technology can do for you. But guess what? You don't know everything what is required to implement a successful technology. That's why collaboration becomes very critical. That's why culture becomes very critical. That's why KPI measurements become very critical. All of these aspects are extremely important. I still believe you've got to have people in the companies. Either you train them, educate them, whatever you do, but they need to know how to collaborate. I think it's very important. If people who can't, you've got to coach them, teach them. If still they can't, you better find another way of doing it. So, so thank you so much. I think over to Jerry. I think we're done with our uh, a lot of time. Prakash, so, Jerry, over Prakash, to you. I just want to add a couple of more points on Prakash. Prakash has covered very well, just for one minute. Yes, sir. I, I personally believe when people sit in this room to look at those tools and all, nobody should know his IT or HR. They should be all together within one goal, one objective. Second one, when we go and look at those tools and objectives, keep your all the old processes mindset at home and look at how these processes other people are doing differently and adopt it and take it. Third one, Let's not look at checklist or evaluation. Today, things are available off the shelf on the cloud. Take it and do two or three groups as a soft launch and let them use the tool and give the real-time feedback and look at the output. Real evaluation will come there. Great. Great. Thank you so much. Jerry, over to you. Great. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, with that question answer, it's a wrap for today's webcast. We have many more questions coming in, but I request our speakers to take them offline. Uh, once again, we thank our partner, People Strong, and our speakers, Sanjeev, Rupinder, and Prakash, for the invaluable information uh, they shared with us today. Meanwhile, you can provide your feedback uh, at the survey link on the chat section. Your input matters to us. Stay tuned for many more such exciting sessions, and that concludes today's webcast. Thank you, and have a great day. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, folks.